great, bad, terrible, indifferent. It doesn't matter. All of those things are what you have drawn in, attracted, fed, and nurtured. So until you can understand and take extreme responsibility for your life by saying, you know, this isn't my parents' fault. This isn't my, the, you know, the narcissist's fault or, um, you know, whatever, whoever you're used to blaming, uh, it's your fault. Until you can say it's my fault, it's my responsibility, there's no option for you to start making a change because when you're in that mindset of it's somebody else's fault, that means the problem is somebody else's fault, but so is the solution. It's leaving you in this victim mode where there's no potential outcome to shift things for you. You're going to be stuck in this position until so-and-so decides to change their, their minds, their life, whatever. And that's a really helpless and hopeless place to be. And the good news is that the moment that you start to see you don't like what's around your life is the moment that your life can start to change. But you have to be willing to say, I'm the one who needs to change, mm -hmm. right? All of the the hurts, all of the uh, the pain, any kind of thing that you are um, looking at right now in your life are because there is something that resonates with that on the inside right? Your inner world will, can only make itself manifested on the outer world. In other world, words, what you have around you is also what you have within you. If you see a bunch of lack, a bunch of barrenness, a bunch of destruction, a bunch of disappointment, all of that stuff is because it's, it's in you first. It's inside of you. That's the state of your soul. And again, until you can take extreme responsibility and say, I'm responsible for watering my soul, I'm responsible for taking out the trash and weeding the weeds and doing all of the upkeep for my soul to make it that garden of life. What I also want to point out is that, you know, again, I keep harping on the taking, taking accountability of where you are now. What happens if you think you're ahead of where you actually are is that you miss a lot of the roots. You won't do the foundational work. Um, and and obviously that just delays the process, that just delays the uh, the outcome that you are seeking, right? The turnaround that you're w waiting for, that you're working towards. But what also can happen is that if you think you're, further um you think you're more behind than what you are you can get frustrated with the process and think you know nothing's working this is not changing anything for me maybe i'm on the wrong path and then you're you're going to try to make a change midway through and what that does is actually shifts directions when um when you're you are on the right path you're just not seeing the the momentum hasn't shifted quite enough yet in your favor to see the outside things change. So, you know, in in the um, session four, I give the example of um, like if you do a detox cleanse, which everybody in here should do, right? It's part of the program. The literal name of this is called the detox intensive. So you need to understand this is a very important part of this of this process of, of truly getting to healing, because we're going to be addressing things that are not just about whatever the narcissist said or didn't say, or didn't do or did or whatever to you. It's really getting down deeper than that. It's getting to the true root of the reason of why you attracted a narcissist, why you continue to put up with the abuse, why you continue to make excuses for the narcissist behavior. And ultimately, why do you think so little of yourself? that you would be willing to put up with that kind of behavior. So we have to get to the very root of all of that stuff. When you're doing a detox, you're in you're infusing your body with positive and healthy nutrients. So whether this is a detox for that you're like a juice cleanse, whether this is a detox bath, it does not matter. This could be a colonic, could be whatever you have decided to do. 
you're infusing something inside or outside, but it, either way, it's forcing things that do not resonate with those type of nutrients, with those type of ingredients that you're putting into your body. It is not resonating with that. So it has to go away, right? It pushes out the unhealthy things. It pushes out the residue, the built up junk that is prohibiting you from thinking clearly, from sleeping well, from being relaxed, from just feeling comfortable in your skin. There's nothing worse than feeling like you just don't belong in your own body. And my point here being is that, you know, on day three, on day four, you might be feeling really terrible, right? Because all of this negative stuff, all of this junk that has been lying beneath the surface, not getting disturbed, you've just been going on your normal life, you've been used to kind of feeling like, you know, maybe you're feeling like a three or a four on a regular basis, but now you're feeling like a one or a two. That's because all that junk is getting brought to the surface. And if you don't understand how a detox works, you can get very frustrated with this process of like, look, I'm eating all of this good stuff. You know, I'm drinking my juice. I'm doing the things I'm meditating. I'm doing this stuff. And yet, look, I feel terrible because if you don't understand that what's happening is your body is purging all of those negative death particles out of your body. If you don't understand that, it's going to be very frustrating to you because you're, you're thinking you're doing the right thing and yet you're feeling worse. Do you understand why it is so important to take accurate account of where you are in the process? 